I almost said the funny part about this video is, but there's nothing funny about this video. You just took one day out of my life. It seems as if 92% of the time when I'm around black people, the stereotype enters the room. The black guy who can't look you know, at somebody with respect on his face. The black guy who, um, Nick, what's your problem? You know, it's funny. This black guy gets on the train, like you're saying, and he's nutting up, but you're the only person he whispered to. And I hate that to say this, but I experience this shit almost every day. You know, I go someplace, and everything will be cool and fine and dandy, and don't get me wrong, that's not a black person. Those people that you encounter today are not black people. And I'm going to explain it. Those people you encountered are niggers. I, I said it, they niggers. They don't just prove the stereotype, they prove it for everyone that sees them. Now, when I was growing up, we were extremely poor. What I mean by extremely poor is my grandma never showed the fact that she was loaning everybody in the project's money. We lived like we didn't have shit, wasn't going to get shit, and didn't know where to find shit. So, when I get in trouble from school, I'd have to sit at home or mow the lawn. I mowed the lawn one time, four times in a week. Looked like we was doing the infield of a baseball park and shit. I had to get got all the grass gone. So, I'm sitting at home, and it's the very first time that I ever noticed because all my entire life, you know, growing up until I became... So when I was exiled, I was exiled from town at, I think it was 12, 13, and um, my grandma had a red, red, a green Oldsmobile, I'll never forget it, and um, whenever you saw that Oldsmobile, you knew who it was, and like I said, I screwed up at school and I'm at home, so I was never rich. I want you to know this. And we was parked out in front of the Goodwill. It just happened that the school bus went that way. And I was coming out, getting ready to get back in the car with my grandma and her best friend. The whole school bus saw me coming out the Goodwill. Now, take it. I just told you my grandmother loaned everybody in the project's money. People couldn't pay their rent. Somebody go to jail. They go to Mama Ida. Mama Ida would bail their kids out of jail. And well, she used to charge like 20 on 100. And this was way back. You borrow 100, got to give back 120. You get the picture? We went without. So everybody else in the neighborhood could survive. But no one knew that until that one day when I stayed home. And, and I'm sitting there watching Grandma alone. Five out of, put like this. Five out of six of the worstest people who fucked with me. She loaned them their family's money to pay their bills. And I knew a secret. I had a secret. I could never tell nobody what I saw. But every day, I go to school and I get fucked with. The one lady come over, give my grandma a bunch of clothes. Of course, you know, clothes for a little boy. I had to wear that shit. I go to school. I'd hear about the goodwill. I'd hear about you wearing my hand-me-downs. But never once did I tell these people that they'd be evicted if it wasn't for my poor-ass grandmama. And every day, I'm thankful for my life. And the worst thing in life is to see these people after you're grown up and you don't have to worry about all that crap no more. To see people still doing the same piddly ass crap. You go to a store called Half Price or Pay Half. You'd be a fool to go pay $75 for a pair of jeans. You'd be an idiot to go pay $250 for a pair of shoes where the bottom of them got to get dirty. 
you was doing the right thing. So don't let yourself feel bad about the niggers. Niggers make fun when they, there's no fun to be made. <laughs> He's shopping at who pay half. She laughing at you, pointing you out to her friend. But right before her friend got to the mall to meet her, where was her ass at? Up and pay half. Oh yeah, getting back to the man on the bus. I'm in a train. That is the worst thing about being uh, an African American man. Or even being from another country and being black coming here to see that. Um, what, what, what's the stereotype? A black man can't take a picture if he got a smile. He always like this. Excuse me. I feel for you. I'm not embarrassed about these people no more. I differentiate. So when these people point their fingers and start screaming nigger and nigger and nigger and nigger and nigger, I'm like, there they go right over there. Right there. There they go. Oh. That what you saw today or whenever you made this video, that's the difference between a black man or a man of color and a nigger. You saw them nigger bitches tripping. <laughs> he, he, he went shopping paid half. Knowing her mama bought half her shit from pay half. The fool on the bus dusting off his shoes. But I keep on saying bus. The fool on the train dusting off his shoes constantly. Like I said, he gonna come to you and say something to you. Did he go to that white man in the suit and say something to him? Do you go to those young white punks that look like they're ready to bust ahead and say anything to them? He came to a legitimate black man to spout a beef. For what? And the two fools fighting. Don't let these niggers get you down. I said it. I said it just like a white man. Don't let them get you down. They are not the same as you. But if they're young, in time, they will be. And when you look back at all the dumb shit and stupid crap that you've been through in life, the fact that these idiots all around you perpetuated a stereotype and didn't even know it. They don't know how they look. They don't know how they sound. They don't know how they make other people feel when they go there. And another thing. If the police would have been called, please. Black guy and a white guy fighting. Whatever. Two guys fighting. You half-ass fit the description. They're going to beat your ass until the, until the other cops get, oh, this ain't him, this is the other guy. Oh, sorry. Dust yourself off. Get the fuck out of here. See, our society is driven on, I always, I always say this, the perception. And you saw these guys and these girls live down the stereotype. They live right down to it. They just like, oh, I'm going to be just like they say I am, all the way down to the, and not show a lack of respect for other people around them. I went through that same shit growing up. When I go back to the neighborhood, Black people all hanging out. Nigga, what you looking at? Motherfucker, what you look? You ain't from around here. These people are not the same as you. They won't be like you for a long time. As far as that guy goes on the train, he was probably sick to begin with, locked up a million times and didn't give a damn. He wanted to go back to jail and he asked you, please send me to jail he asked he asked you to send him to jail with that look on his face I'll kick everybody come on man this is why we get cussed out call out see I'm going bald somebody said I need a line cussed out call out our names disrespected because of those people you saw those people those niggers did that so you ain't got nothing to Don't be embarrassed because they're beneath you. They're very beneath you. And they have been tubed.